Hello scientists, we have a new equation that we want to introduce to you. This is going to allow us to take some ideas around energy that we already know a little bit about. So we know how to figure out how much energy is used or how much energy is gained in a system. Think about the roller coaster project. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about how, how much time was involved in a particular process. That's going to lead us to this new idea of power. And so if I had, for example, some amount of energy, let's say I'm lifting something up into the air and it takes me a really long time to lift it into the air. So that's going to be a very large time that's down here in the denominator. That means that I'm going to not use very much power. But if I lift that same object and I lift it very, very quickly, then I can end up learning from this equation that that tiny little number in the denominator over here is going to make for a very powerful move. A lot of power is being used. So this is our new equation. Just like any equation, we have to be really mindful of the units that we're using. So we've already had conversations with you that when we are talking about the energy over here that we are using, we would really like to be in joules. And that had some rules around it that we were starting to practice in our earlier unit. So I'm going to keep my energy in joules. I'm going to, by requirement, I'm going to put all of my time measurements in seconds. And that's just something that needs to happen so that my powers that we're going to calculate over here can come out in a new unit that's called the watt. And you've probably even heard of the watt before. And so the watt is going to be our preferred unit for power. Capital W is the symbol. We want to make sure our energies are measured in joules. Capital J is the symbol for that. And then we're going to request that our times are going to be in seconds. So even if a problem statement tells me something about minutes or hours, I need to do a unit conversion and get to seconds for this to make sense for us. So let's take a quick look at a sample problem here. So I already wrote one out. And so what we're going to do is we are going to lift a rock and we're going to say how much power is needed to lift a five kilogram rock two meters off the ground if it takes four seconds to do that lift. Now this is a fairly complicated problem. It has a lot of different things going on. I would ask you first and foremost to look at the units that you see on each and every number in this thing. That's going to give me some idea of what I'm looking at. So kilogram, I know that that's a mass. Lowercase m right here, that's meters. And then of course I have four seconds, that have, that's a time over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first use our skills that we learned from our first unit and I'm going to calculate the gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh and I'm going to do this calculation first find my energy. So that is what I'm after right there. This is going to be 5 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 capital N over M over kg, excuse me. Then I'm going to multiply by 2 meters. That's my H that's sitting there. And when I do this, this is going to come out to 98 joules. If I were to plug that into my calculator. This is now, it's a gravitational potential energy, but this is how much energy I put into this rock. Now I had to fight against gravity to do that, so I lifted it up and I gave it that much energy. So the question is, is how powerful was I in this process? So my power is going to be energy over time. And I'm just using a generic energy. We're going to see that it could be lots of different types of energy. But in this particular case, my energy is the gravitational potential. So now I'm going to say power is equal to, I just calculated this number right here, 98 joules. 98 joules. And then I'm going to divide by my time. And if I'm really good with my units, I know that I'm sitting on a time right there with the four seconds. I'm going to say four and just a lowercase s for the seconds. And if I do this mathematics, I'm going to get 24.5. And if I go back to my original equation that we were just learning about, 
this is where it's so important to know my units. So if I come down here, if I was in joules, I'm in seconds, this is going to come out in a watt. And that's going to be a recognizable unit for us. So this is going to be a capital W. That's how many watts of power I exerted over the course of this amount of time in order to lift this rock. All right, hopefully that made sense to you.